It has been so long and I've missed you all. Uh, there have been some very significant changes, major changes in my life that have kept me away uh, for a long time. And I apologize for leaving you hanging for so long. I want to thank everyone uh, who hung in there with me, everyone who's still here, still supporting the channel. And I want to thank all those people who, uh, who reached out, sent messages just to say what's up, ask what's going on with the channel, or just send their general support. I really appreciate all of that. And I'm very happy to be back today with another video. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, bass solos. This is your guide to a better bass solo. Um, there are many, many, but this is just one. And this is a bit of a different approach. Uh, but first of all, before we get into that, I just wanna talk a little bit about the idea of soloing and the pressure that that word uh, can put on anyone. I know that the word itself can really strike fear into the hearts of the best of us, but it doesn't have to. I feel like, you know, we put this pressure on ourselves to, to be better than everyone else in the band for like two or three choruses anytime it comes time for us to uh, take a solo on a song. So I wanna get rid of that pressure. And maybe, you know, one way to get rid of that pressure is to just not think of your solo as a solo. I really want to think of solos, in my case, I really want to think of solos as being like a composition within the composition. It's my interpretation of the melodic content within the, either the melody or the harmony um, that I can then use as my own sort of springboard to uh, compose something that might mean something to somebody. So this method of improvisation involves starting with one note and then building from there so that you can create something um, that's not just melodic, but it also has a bit of motific development. And you're also getting yourself very familiarized with um, a larger section of the fretboard. I'll show you how we go about doing this. So let's say I take a, a harmony like D minor just as an example. What I want to do from there is start with one note. So I'll pick a note usually on the G string or my highest string wherever, and that note can be anything. So if I, if I choose this note, uh, I'm not going to concern myself with what it is for the time being. I'm just going to say that this note is my starting point. Now here's where things get cool, because what I want to do from there is play two notes with the harmony above where I've started. So use your ear a little bit. Find those notes, two notes above where you are. I like those two. And then from there, I want to pick two notes below where I am. So now what I've done is I've created two three-note cells. There's one cell, there's the other cell. And again, I got that cell by choosing a note that works to me, to my ears, with the harmony that I'm working with. So here's my first note, and then I pick two notes above that, and then I go back to my first note, and I pick two notes below that. 
And those are my two note cells. Uh, or sorry, those are my two three note cells. Working with D minor. So now I can create melodies using these two cells. Just three notes. So that's my starting point. Now what I can do is with each cell I can add one note. And every time I add a note, I'm building a shape with, within the area that I'm working with. So if my three note cell becomes a four note cell, then I want the three note cell on the other side to become a four note cell as well. See what I'm doing? So I'm using my ear to tell me what note is gonna come next. As I work my way down the cell and add new notes with each uh, phase. So then everything, every time I play a phrase on one cell, I can copy that phrase on the other cell. So now I'm building a motif, right? I'm, I'm using this sort of call and response method um, to build my solo. And then at the same time, I'm also building these two cells. So right now I have two four note cells. But I can add a note. What note will come next? So now I have one, two, three, four, five notes on this cell, which means I can now add another note. One, two, three, four, five notes here. And then I can play phrases based on those two five note cells. a sixth note. So if I've added a sixth note here, that means I should add one at the other cell as well. There's my sixth note for that cell. There's a seventh note. Oh, so I should add a seventh note here. So see what's happening there? I've got these shapes that are being built based on the one note that I started with. I'm playing in D minor, and I have chosen the 10th fret of the G string, which just happens to be the minor third. But I'm not concerning myself with that. Um, I lucked into that. So I chose that one note, and then I play two notes above that sound good to me, work with the harmony, and then two notes below, work with the harmony. And then from there, I just keep building my cell shape until I get all of the notes in that area. Oops. And then I can do the same thing with the other cell. So now I have these two full shapes that I can play using this D minor harmony. I've built two areas of the neck, starting from one note and then working my way up to, um, you know. Two different sections of the fretboard that I can go back and forth between to, to build a solo.
So now I've got these two um, full shapes that I can work with based on the one note that I've started with because I've taken that one note, played two notes above that to create a three note cell. And then I've gone back to that one note and then played two notes below that to create another three note cell. And then with those two three note cells, I can just play simple phrases and then with each um, phrase, I can add another note to each cell. So I start with three notes. And then four notes. Five notes. Six. See how that works? It's so cool. I hope that all makes sense, my friends and neighbors. I hope that sparks some new ideas and uh, leads you to some new creative directions with your soloing uh, and helps you to form some new melodies and, and try some things that you might not have tried before when it comes to taking solos on the bass. Um, hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, please do click like. Uh, because I've been away for so long, the YouTube algorithm thinks I don't exist. So, so I need you to give me a bit of an extra boost to let them know and let everyone else know that we're here. We're here. Hi, everybody. We're here. So please do click like, spread the word, share this video with anyone uh, that you think you know, might need this information. Uh, and you can also donate to the channel in a number of ways, which is very cool. Uh, I will leave a link in the description box that will allow you to donate whatever amount you see fit. Uh, there is also an option for you to join the channel for $5 a month. Just click that little join button underneath this video. Uh, and I don't know when they added this, but there's also like a little tip button with like a little heart. Um, which allows you to donate a couple of bucks to the channel as well. All of the above, of course, helps me out in a huge way, and I am very appreciative of all the support. Thank you so much for hanging in. Listen, my name is Rich Brown. I will see you in the next video, hopefully very soon. Peace.